when it comes to trading, it's extremely difficult. You come over here, you look at all these different names, all these different overall stocks, and you get a little bit confused and you don't know exactly what to trade. But that's the point of this video today. We're going to attack this specifically so you understand how to trade, what to look for, and ex everything that goes into all my steps. And it starts really right here with a few key things. I want to highlight before we go into this, it's going to take a lot of work it's going to take a lot of effort, but I just want to show you exactly what's going into every single detail of me getting into trades and how I view the market every single day. There's not going to be a one size fits all for everything here. And do know that you can implement some of the only things that you're running with your own strategy. It's all meant to complicate, but really it's to show that some of these things are simpler than we make them out to be. And that's what I really want to focus on here in the video. Okay. So number one, it always comes back down to features. And this is a really big part of this. Okay. So whenever I'm looking at anything, it's always starting here with either the NASDAQ or ES. That's the most important thing you could ever do. So you need to start on higher timeframes and understand what you're looking at and understanding what you have the opportunity to get from the market, right? And you're going to hear me say a lot, get from the market, not take, but get, because you're always getting opportunities that are in front of you and you're just taking what's being given to you. Okay. So that's what we're looking at here. So if we look here at the, you know, the past year, it, we're clearly in a bullish trend. So I'm going to favor most of my trades to the upside, right? That can be biased, whatever you want to call it, but I want to be in favor of that trend. Now, obviously when I go to shorter time frames, you're going to identify some of these like pullbacks you have. For instance, basically from, you know, July into October, really nice pullback. So how do you identify those? One is understanding what constitutes a trend, right? Short term, higher time frame as well. So shorter time frame, four hours, two hour, higher time frame, um, daily, weekly. So when you start seeing on like the two hour, four hour, you're making lower highs and lower lows, then yeah, you are making a bearish structure. You're pulling back. But in the grand scheme of things, you're above the 200 SMA. There's still a lot of things going inside of the bulls in the long run. So we can't get too crash, 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 because we do know the market over time traditionally goes up, going to the NASDAQ as well, right? And so we go back here, and so we identify what's happening here. Now, during this time frame of back here, yeah, you're probably looking for short setups in the smaller time frame. I'm not looking to swing shorts. I'm looking to day trade on the short side. There's a very big difference, okay? But then once you start breaking out of structure here, you start trying to get out of that bull flag, then you're probably looking for swings, bigger setup, bigger opportunities, and then as well, well as getting some of those scalps to the upside there. So you have more options in that time frame. Now, when you're in this pullback, I don't think you have as many options. Really, patience is your best friend as well. It's always very important to me that I'm splitting up how we're looking at the market from higher time frames to smaller time frames. And some of you might think shorter term time frames are just a five minute and the one minute, but I would say that's totally wrong because a five minute trend is really going to tell you nothing. But when you look at a two hour trend, it tells you a lot more and it really sets up bigger and better trends trades. I'm not interested in making $50 necessarily. Now, if I have a $300 account, making $50 is great. It's good. But if I'm trading with 5,000 to 10,000, $50 is still something, but ultimately it's not going to get me to where I want to be and to really be successful in the long run, right? I'm looking at really setting myself for the most success possible. So when I look at this, I have to be able to identify the underlying trend and that's where everything starts. Okay. That's the basis of all this. So you have to establish futures, ES, NASDAQ, and then you move on to the equities and that's where we're going now. Okay, so the difference between me and you most likely is that I can look at stocks all day long, meaning that I can just sit here for eight, seven hours a day. And this is all that I do. I just look at them. I'm talking about them on Twitter, social media, everything like that. But for the normal guy, the, you know, someone that's just getting into it, I always say pick three to five names tops. I really recommend three. So what I would say, number one, Apple is always on your list. You pick a more volatile name, Nvidia, maybe Tesla. And then you pick one that's a little bit more moderate, like Microsoft, maybe even Amazon, one of those names. And then you can add more to your arsenal as you get better. But for today, as usual, I think Apple is the best stock that you can learn. I think it moves almost perfectly. So like what we're going to do really quick is go into the example of Apple. So before I do that, what do we know with NASDAQ? You have been pulling back on the past few days and you've actually stopped making shorter term, higher highs and higher lows. And the two hour, four hour, you're making lower lows now. This is kind of still good for you. This, you understand like we're looking for pullbacks here. Now we also know going into Apple, we have some fundamental downside news, some downgrades, right? And so what happens here? We zoom out, we find our key level, we go back to 2021. I know this is crazy, this is our previous all time high. It's a massive key level there. We mark it out, we zoom back into where we're at. And when you come back into this level, you can see it's been a kind of a brick wall over the past you know few months and so when we go to the 15 minute or the five minute you can see over the past few days 
the downside has been the opportunity here. You keep breaking down. And so right here, you really get your setup. This is the setup for you, right? That 183 level, you broke beneath it, you retested, you came down, and now you're making lower highs from it, as you can see there. We're making lower highs, as you can tell. And you're coming into our key target of the 200 SMA. So that's something that's just bare bones, very simple to be looking at. Now you can combine this with VWAP to understand quicker scalps, things like that as well. Again, you can see coming into VWAP, rejected, VWAP, rejected, you know, that's just quick, easy to see. You can also identify the trend line of making those higher lows as well quick and easy to see these all line up in these based on our other previous educational videos that make logical sense okay everything here very easy to see they're almost gimmies if you play them out in your head right so going into something like let's say nvidia now we have nvidia and this is a great for instance now if i'm favoring trading the downside nvidia is not one of the better setups right now because even though the Qs and nasdaq are moving down you know, basically they've been coming down over the past few days. NVIDIA has shown a lot of resilience, right? You're bouncing up through this. You're kind of getting a bull flag here back into the key level of 500, right? You see coming into that. So I'm going to go into NVIDIA thinking, man, maybe I don't want to go short on this name because it's holding up better than a lot of the other names. So I'm going to favor trading Apple because a lot of the inherent weakness there. What I just covered at the end of that is interpreting what's weak versus what's strong. And this is a common issue that I find with traders and I find with questions on social media, specifically on Twitter. People always ask about stocks, if we're going to go up, if we're in like kind of just moving down. Now I get it. If you're going for a swing, the best time to buy is at a major support. It gives you the best opportunity. But I also say this all the time. You don't have to be the first one to buy. You can wait to get confirmation on indexes and then move back into that position that bounced off of that key level or that support. Chances are, if it bounced before every other name, it's probably inherently stronger than the rest of the names that showed most of the weakness. Great example here, NVIDIA. If the market were to bounce on Monday or Tuesday after this weekend, I could almost be willing to bet that nvidia is going to have a really nice strong push back into the key level 500 before apple pushes back into its key level why because it's already inherently strong so what do we want to do again you want to establish trades you want to establish positions based on the underlying trend of the market the nasdaq es q spy if you are not trading with that trend i think you're putting yourself in a bigger position to lose and the number one like strategy with myself is to always put myself in the best position to win over time. Cause I understand this game, you're going to lose, you are going to lose, but it's a matter of how much are you going to lose? And are you putting yourself in the best position risk to reward wise? And that's why I favor trading specific weak stocks that are trading with a weaker market. When we're moving to the upside, I favor trading strong names that are already moving with a stronger market. You want to be on the side of that trend. Last example, I'm going to use some like Microsoft and you always hear me talk about ill liquid names, ill liquid with stocks, things like that. Okay. So Microsoft has been a brick wall at this level. And this is something I'm mentioning a lot on social media right now. So when we look at Microsoft, let's just talk really quick about it. So Microsoft has been bouncing over and over the 366 level, and it comes back out into the key level, our previous all time high established here in July, 2023. And, but what we do know is below that key level, right? We'll just use this right here is you're very illiquid. What does that mean? So getting below this, you would cut through this like butter very very easily and you see right here where all this liquidity is how you can see all that pressure look that's why at the top of this range around 376 375 we continue to get rejected why at the bottom of this range we keep getting bought back up because this is where price is basically like a magnet to when we get below this there's a very little support very very little until you get back down to 350. you have a little bit of a range here but it's not much you can see after you lose that range it really becomes nothing okay so going into microsoft it's one of those names that i want to short but i can't short yet so for instance i'm never going short on a name that's sitting on top of a major support it makes no sense for me right so what i'm always looking for is the break the retest and the continuation now why am i looking for that retest that retest offers me the best risk to reward meaning what meaning if we come back into this i know i can easily set you know a little bit more maybe aggressive on my entry but i can also move my stop up to like 368 but i'm also targeting down pretty easily down to at least target number one. And then if we set up the next trade as well, you're targeting down to target number two, which this is where everything becomes very, very interesting. You know, you're looking all the way down to 350. And you look at the R value here is 2.3. Two is the baseline of any type of trade you want to get into. 7.57, that's a swing trade. Obviously there, you're looking for some runners to be left in the game. And that's a monster trade. That is a monster, monster, monster trade. For every dollar you're risking, you're looking to make $7.50. 
It's a great trade. That's a great opportunity. And so these are where the plays really set up. But if you go short immediately here, well, what happens if you get one of these little wicks to where you bounce and you go straight back up? Wick, you get trapped in that position. So this is why we always love to use the break and retest to protect ourselves in trades like this. And so these are things that you have to be watching and you have to be looking for. And so Microsoft here, it's one of those things that's just trading in a clear cut range. So if you're bouncing at this level, it makes logical sense if you want to you know trade back to the upside you've been bouncing every single time at least back to the mid-range of 372 373 or back to 375 so you still get all that potential trade and this is just based on risk to reward nonetheless like you don't have to look at the market because even when the market was moving opposite to the downside or anything like that you still get those setups and so these are for those people that are just trading ranges some people just love trading the back and forth chop it's your bread and butter now it's not my thing but you can still do this very easily and you can just see clear cut where that's coming from and again if you want to see why this is doing this you can use the vpvr one of the best tools on trading view most likely and you just bring it out here and you can really establish where those ranges are just like if you get back down to 335 to 320 right? This was a huge range. That's why we sat there for so long and it was so difficult to get a, a breakout from this range. You sat here from essentially June all the way into in, to November, right? A long time in that range. There were a few breakouts, but it was like a magnet. So again, those are things that you have to be looking for here on the chart. So when it comes to trading, those are the things that I'm primarily looking for. And I wish I could go on a long tangent and go over 20 different stocks, but ultimately that's the basis, right? I understand what's weak. I understand what's strong. And I kind of understand what's right in the middle that could be breaking down to become very weak or that's still showing a lot of resilient strength. And I have to be able to identify what is my strategy throughout the day? What is my game plan? Am I looking to stay in the market? Am I looking to swing? Am I looking to scalp? And it really provides all that you know, detail, all that analysis based on watching futures and then stair-stepping down into equities that provide basically what I'm looking for or what my overall goal is throughout the day. That's how I look at the market. That's how I'm trading. If you have questions, comment down below. More videos coming out every single week. Have a good one, traders.